Good morning. This is take two. For some reason it didn't record. So some of my things might look like I've already done them, then that's because I already have. <laughs> so this weekend is the long weekend, so I just wanted to let you know that Monday is a holiday, so I won't see you on Monday. I will see you on Tuesday. And how are you this morning? If you could pick a color, what color would you pick? I picked pink. And how am I feeling? I'm okay. Just okay today. And the date. This is our clue. That's right, it's Friday. It is Friday. Oops, I'm covering it. And what is the number of our day? Right there. 15. That's right, it's the 15th. And our month, January, February, March, and April, May. And the year, 2020. So it is Friday, May 15th, 2020. Can you imagine that? And the weather, what's the weather doing at your place? Oh, the temperature went down in Meaford. It was different about a half an hour ago. Okay, so is it gonna focus for me? There. That's what it's doing in Thornberry. It's raining. It's 11 degrees. And that's what it's doing in Meaford. It's eight degrees. That's quite a bit colder than us, but it is raining today. It's a rain day. Okay. And the news. Today, Trudeau is opening up the application for students to apply for um, some funding. You can also apply to jobs. There's going to be a job list. And you can volunteer. And if you volunteer 100 hours, you get a $1,000 bursary, which is money that you don't have to pay back. So that's good. Hopefully the students will get on and be able to apply for that. And Ford is in the first stages of reopening Ontario. Uh, two of those things includes golf courses and parks. So they are saying that they're just partial open so or with new rules so you have to maybe when you go know that there's going to be some new rules that you have to follow. So make sure you read the signs or follow the directions of whatever they've put out. Uh, for you for information because uh, they are going to have differences. They're going to still try and continue social distancing or physical distancing um, at parks and golf courses. Some good news stories. People are starting to do victory gardens and victory gardens are from after the World War II. People were encouraged to um, have their own vegetable gardens and flower beds in their backyards to help them uh, have their own food. So people, I guess, are starting to do that, which actually I have too. I got a, a uh, greenhouse and I want to do a garden on my deck. Another really cute little story was there was an interviewer, a businesswoman, or a business uh, researcher from Calgary, and she was giving some information to CTV. And in the background, you could hear her cat meowing. And she kept professional and got through what she wanted to say. And then the CTV interviewer said, what's your cat's name? 
and her cat's name is Cleopatra. And so Cleopatra, it's Cleopatra. And she said that the cat is always asleep during the day, but whenever she gets on to do her work, the cat comes out and meows. So the cat wanted its 50 minutes of fame. Okay, the comic today. The comic is Lucy. And Lucy is sitting with, oh, what's his name again? I forget. And he's playing the piano. And she's leaning against his piano and says, what if you and I got married someday? Schroeder. There it is. It's right there. And she says, and what if we were so poor you had to sell your piano so we could buy saucepans? And Schroeder says, saucepans? Sure. You wouldn't expect me to keep house without a good set of saucepans, would you? Saucepans. Girls have to think about these things. Boys are lucky. They never have to worry about things like saucepans. I can't stand it. I just can't stand it, Schroeder says. So this, I looked this up, and this was produced in 1972. So maybe in 1972, that was a woman's job. I don't think that's the same now, because there's a lot of men that cook. So I think that the man can help get the saucepans too. I hope this keeps going. I just saw a flicker. Okay, the item that we had yesterday was this one. And it's Montreal meat. And it's prepared a certain way. And they have these sandwiches in Montreal. There's a special store and people line up outside the store to get this sandwich. It's supposed to be really good. This is going to be the item for the next time. Do you know what this is? And I will tell you on Tuesday. Okay? Mm, doesn't that look good? That would go good with poutine. And the sound today. You're going to like this one. Are you ready? That's right, it's you guys singing at the Christmas concert, O Canada. And then we sang at the Owen Sound Attack game. It was pretty fun. Okay, the life skill. Now the life skill is going to be tricky because I already did it. And I think this is when my, when my camera stopped. So I'm going to be very careful with moving my... camera. Okay, and I'll explain what I did. See what I can do here. Okay, so the first thing is, this was a pita, a round pita, and I took a cookie cutter and I made a heart. And, oh, sorry, I've gotten off I forgot to say, it's about parties, and this is hors d'oeuvres that you can make for your parties. And then I had slices of cheese. Like this was one piece. And then you do a cookie cutter for the cheese. And then you can put the cheese on top of your little pita. Make a little hors d'oeuvre. I also did a star. So the other thing you could do is do cheese and lunch meat, or you could do crackers. And I was saying on the last video that um, 
cheese slices would be good because they're a good size. My cookie cutters are pretty big. So that was one activity. You use cookie cutters with bread, crackers, um, cheese, lunch meat. And the other one was an apple. So this is the top and bottom of the apple. And I got two pieces cut out. And I used toppings for my apple slices. So I have almond butter and some vanilla icing. And then you can make little apples with toppings. So this one's got the almond butter and apples and almond butter taste really good. Oh, and this one is my icing and apple and it's vanilla icing. And then I topped it with raisins and that was actually a smiley face. Yeah, so that was my idea, is to make little fun hors d'oeuvres for your party. Now you're going to have to get help because I did use a knife. So that's a safety thing. So you're going to have to have help. And you're in the kitchen, so whenever you're in the kitchen you should get help. And then the cookie cutter also could have sharp edges. But yeah, you can make fun little hors d'oeuvres for your party. Okay. We're going to go to the Toronto Zoo. I just have to get some space for my computer. And we're going to talk about this animal today. Do you know what that is? If you said a bird, you're right. And if you said a vulture, you're even more right. It is called the white-headed vulture. And it is from the African savanna. This vulture is endowed with an old-fashioned look. So endowed means it's got, that's what it's wearing, sort of. with a classic black-white contrast over its large body. Skinny pink extends out from the white down that covers most of the upper legs, making it look like the white-headed vulture is wearing pantaloons, which are little pants that you would wear under your dress. White flares up onto the belly and undertail cover covers. A chocolate breast looks like a waistcoat with white crop patch forming the V at the top. White continues halfway up the neck, almost encircled with a black ruffle. White down also covers the head from the forehead back to an angular crest crown and down the nape to tuck into the ruff. So they're really describing this oops thing like very using very big words but it, what they're trying to say is it looks like you, they're wearing a coat see that front and the and the big ruffle around its neck it looks like it's wearing a, a old fashioned coat and white pants and it has a white shirt or vest so the black vest makes it look like a V in the front. And it has that big ruffle around the neck. So it does make it look like it's wearing an old fashioned coat. Long wings extend just beyond the tail are mostly black. Exceptions are white inner secondaries on the female. A band of buff edged wings convert onto outer wings and outer wings convert tipped white so that when the wings are extended, an arc of white runs longitudinally through their middle. The shortish, shortish wedge-shaped tail is almost also black. 
bare pink skin covers the face, including the cheeks, eye ring, and chin. The skin shades into lilac on the neck. It sounds beautiful. A round hole in the cheek is the ear. The heavy looking bill is orange, red, and black tipped, and the upper mandible is sharply curved. The talons are black and acutely curved. And the length is 72 to 82 centimeters, so not quite a meter stick tall. And the wings, though, are very long, 207 to 230 centimeters. So their wings are much longer than they are in their height. A male can weigh 4 kilograms and a female 4.7 kilograms. So the female is actually heavier than the male. The avoiding forests and human habitation, they occupy trees of the savanna. From there it forages over open spaces like grasslands, thornbush, sub-deserts, and other sparsely vegetated regions. Though mainly a lowland species, it has been found up to 4,000 meters up. The diet, they primarily are scavengers. It specializes in skin, bone fragments, and other scraps from carrion. It will also pirate from other birds, especially the marabou stork. It eats locusts and termites as well as bird eggs and the occasional stranded fish or amphibian. And the threat to survival? Farmers sometimes hunt them and they mistakenly believe that they've killed their cattle, but the talons are not strong enough to do that. And the environment actually does need them because they help get rid of disease-ridden carcasses. And we know that um, ill animals can transmit disease to humans, and that's why some of our we have some of the flus that we have. Uh, decline in population of this grazing or of the grazing mammals in Africa have translated into a decline of the vulture. So we need to think of that because they are important in keeping the diseased animals all cleaned up, which is a very important job. There it is. So that is the white-headed vulture from Africa. Okay, let's see where we're at. Okay, so we're going to do a little bit of exercise. Today we're going to use the wall again. So yesterday we just were putting our hands out anywhere and leaning and keeping our feet flat on the ground. Today we're going to focus on our arms and we're going to make a U like this on the wall and we're going to just lean into the wall and then keeping one hand on the wall we're taking our other hand off and we count to ten. One, Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Then you're going to put your hand back, make your U, and then you're going to take that hand off and count. And see how I'm leaning? So I'm putting pressure on that arm, so it has to do a little bit of work. It's holding some of the my body weight. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten. So you can do more of those and just switch your hands. Make sure you have your U and take one hand off and the other hand. And you can also do your other stretches, which was lying on the ground and doing this, and then switching to your other and this.
And then the other one was just leaning in and keeping your feet flat, just hug the back stretch. And the other one was lying on the ground and bending your knees. Putting your arms out and then leaning to one side and stretching this part of your body. So if you do this one and the leg ones, you're almost stretching your entire body. And there you go. And it's good to stretch your body. Keeps your muscles nice and long. Helps with your joints. Okay, and the lantern. Do you know where the lantern is today? I'm moving back and forth. Ooh, where is it? Where is it? <laughs> it is right there. It's hanging, excuse me, from a hook on the cabinet. There you go. So, I did pretty good today. 21 minutes. I hope you have a great weekend. It's the long weekend, so hopefully we get a little bit of sunshine. And enjoy your family. And I miss you. And we'll see you on Tuesday. Bye. Happy Friday.